what this column points out, and again, it's a blog on our website, <clears throat> crossexamined.org, that's crossexamined with a D on the end of it, .org. It points out that a study was done recently by a Case Western Reserve University professor that found out that atheists are more likely to be angry at God, not at, other, not at believers of God, so to speak, but angry at God. And the, the researcher found out that there was a link between suffering and, and anger at God. I'll just read this short section. Uh, she said, studies in traumatic events suggest a possible link between suffering, anger toward God, and doubts about God's existence. According to Cook and Wimberley from 1983, 33% of parents who suffered the death of her child reported doubts about God in the first year of bereavement. In another study, 90% of mothers who had given birth to a profoundly retarded child voiced doubts about the existence of God. That's from another study in 1985. Our survey research with undergraduates has focused directly on the association between anger at God and reported drops in belief. In the wake of a negative event, life event, anger toward God predicted decreased belief in God's existence. And the author of this particular article goes on to say that the most striking finding was that when X-Line, that's the professor at Case Western University, looked only at subjects who reported a drop in religious belief, their faith was least likely to recover if anger toward God was the cause of their loss of belief. In other words, anger toward God may not only lead people to atheism, but give them reason to cling to their disbelief. Now, the point here is, this is exactly what's predicted in the Bible. It's predicted and said to be true by Paul in his letter to the Romans, the first chapter, and it's called visible ignorance. Now what's visible ignorance? It's the intentional suppression of knowledge, the intentional, intentional suppression of knowledge that is within an individual's control and for which he is responsible before God for. Paul says this, for God's invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made so that they are without excuse. That people suppress the truth and unrighteousness. They know that God exists, but they suppress it. And if you read further into Romans chapter 1, you realize that this suppression ultimately leads to people into depravity to the point that not only are they doing evil things, they're encouraging other people to do these evil things. And maybe from this, this vitriol, this anger comes. What about infanticide? Um, morally, I, strictly morally, I can see no objection to that at all. I would be in favor of infanticide.